Let's give Jesus a wonderful round of applause. My dear friends, is everything all right? I believe this meeting will be a blessing. Every time we get together in the name of Jesus, He says He's in our midst. So when He is present, let's pay attention to what He'll speak to our heart. All things are done and obtained through faith. Then, when you start praying, surrender yourself to the Lord. People who give testimonies proceed in this way, not because it was a privilege or they're special, but they came and heard the word, and when they prayed, they surrendered and believed, and God was able to work. The Lord God said in the Bible that there is absolutely nothing overtly difficult for Him unless they don't believe Him. He respects people if they don't want to believe. He cannot go beyond His own word, brethren. But like Jesus said, if you believe, you'll see the glory of God. I don't know whether you're going through problems or not, but I know the one who can solve all problems. He's the Lord Jesus. He will talk about his word and we will pray. And when you believe, he'll get into action. You who are at home, do the same thing. If you know someone who has been suffering, if you can do it now without being inconvenient, since our program is aired in different times of the day, do tell these people to watch us because certainly the Lord can and will bless them all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's now see someone who was healed in one of our meetings, shall we? Why are you crying, sister? Out of happiness, when I left home, I said, I'll go to church because today I will receive my healing. Where was your problem? In my knee. What's your name? Jujic. Jujic. What has Jesus done for you, sister? He healed me because How when I left home... How long have you had home, this problem? More than 20 years. How were you walking before, sister? I used to lean on my brother's arm. Pretend I'm your brother. How did you walk? I walked like this. I didn't walk steadily. I'm Walk normally now, sister. I'm healed what now. What did you say? I'm free. I'm free. Let's clap for Jesus. I used to suffer a lot with this pain in my knee. It hurt in the evening. It hurt all the time. And one of my legs were shorter than the other, but not anymore. I watched Dr. Suarez every day. And then I said, when he said he was going to be here, I said, I will wake up early in the morning to take my grandson to the doctor. And I still haven't had lunch. I said, I'll go to seek my blessing. And I'm healed, look! I couldn't move my knee like this. I couldn't do this. I used to walk as a stiff, as a robot, but not anymore. Now I walk normally. I couldn't put on my shoes because my feet would swell. My pairs of shoes are all in a cabinet. But from today on, I'm going to wear all the shoes I have. I'll be elegant as before. A new life because Jesus has healed me. I came to seek my blessing and I received it. This is so beautiful, brethren. Let's clap for Jesus. Our God is really awesome. If only people understood, we're not talking about religion. We don't attack neither one or the other. We don't promote any either. We have no interest in religion. Leave it for the religious people. We're directly connected to the Lord God. He comes, heals, delivers, blesses, transforms. And today is a day for us to be blessed. When Jesus was here on earth, that was exactly what he did. He brought the understanding of God's word. And wherever he went, whether in cities, towns, and villages, people brought the stick to the streets and squares, and they begged Jesus to allow them to touch at least the hem of his garments, all of his garments, and all of those who touched Jesus were healed. Preaching the gospel is making the garments of Jesus av available to people. The hem of his garments, you don't have to grab it. Just touch the tip of the hem and you receive your blessing. Today, wherever you are, rest assured God has something huge to do in your life. There are so many people, and we can state it without any doubt, who are going through very difficult situations. But we're here to help you. We're here to preach God's word, and God will bless you, and he'll do it in profusion. Let's open the Holy Scriptures to the first letter to Timothy chapter 5. It has a special message, my friends. In the first letter to Timothy chapter 5, verse number 8, the following guidance is written that I want to go over with you. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. I am a pastor. 
But if I don't provide for the people the Lord is giving me, and he's been giving me thousands of people around the world, through TV networks, through social media, we have reached people in places we never thought that we'd ever be able to reach them. And God's taking us there and blessing us. People are getting to know God's word and coming to Jesus. But if I don't consecrate myself and prepare and don't provide for all of these people, and mainly, as it's written here, does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household, those, those sponsors by sustaining me and coming to the church, then I'd really be doing something wrong. What would I be doing wrong? The Bible says that I've denied the faith. Faith does help us intercede for people, become holy to God. It enables us to be prepared to help those who are lost and the ones in need and enables us to give a solution to their woes. And what happens to me? I become worse than an unbeliever. Mind you, while preaching the word of God, I may be before the spiritual word both of the Lord and of the devil and he's eager. He's, he's actually eager for me to be worse than the unbeliever. But how can I be worse than an unbeliever? When I do not provide for the ones the Lord is giving me, with you, it's the same thing. You have a friend or two that you have evangelized. Even if they have to heed you, you sowed a little seed. Paul said that he had planted and, and Apollo watered. Someone watered that seed and God brought forth the fruit. And we do the same. We must sow the seed and water it. Convey the word. You must insist on it. The more we can do about it now, the more people will help and more rewards we'll receive in eternity. Do not go to eternity empty-handedly. Enter as saved people waiting for the rewards that the Lord will give you. Let me pray with you, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone who have given me, no matter where they are in the world. I pray for people who are going through great predicaments so that they wake up and be blessed. And I will bless them now by saying all evil that is in these people's life from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, in their body, their soul, their spirit, their family, their marriage, no matter where. In the name of the Lord Jesus, leave and don't ever return. In the name of Jesus, and you say, Amen. This message is very important, brethren. But if anyone, it doesn't matter who, it may be Dr. Suarez or anyone else, does not provide for his own, we must provide for them. We must consecrate ourselves and ask God for his guidance. Maybe their whole family is straying from God, but we resort to the word asking the Lord for guidance, for revelation, and God will give us so we may sow the seed. We do something here and something there. All of a sudden, everybody starts to change. If we who are believers don't do that, who is going to do it? There are people in prostitution, others in drugs, some unemployed, others dishonest, but we are considered the salt of the earth. And if we don't provide for them, we'll be denying the faith. And besides denying the faith, we become worse than all of the unbelievers. A kind of people God cannot count on. We become worse. Lord have mercy. I don't even want to be like them, let alone worse. Put it in your heart, consecrated yourself. Joshua said, sanctify yourselves. Do it today for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. Let's see another testimony of someone who was blessed in one of our meetings. And you, my sister. I had pain in my legs, you know. You came here with a cane and you're still using it. Yes, I'm using it. But why don't you walk without it? I will walk without it in the name of but Jesus. But when, when are you going to walk? Right now. So in the name of Jesus, come here. How long have you been used it? More than 10 years. I see. Hold your cane here. Yes, hold it. Walk now in the name of Jesus. I want to see it. There you go, sister. Walk in the name of Jesus. Arthrosis. I had a surgery in my femur and hips, and now I'm fine. I can bend over. I can walk right. Look, Jesus has healed me. Let's applaud Jesus, brethren. Now we'll go to Psalms 85. I want to study it. The psalmist was used by God. He said many beautiful things, prophecies of God, and also teachings. And in Psalm number 85, the verse is number 8, he gives us a revelation that I want to study with you. Thus it is written, I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. What do we have here, brethren? 
It's what we have always learned. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. The psalmist understood that when he heard the Lord God, because the Lord's mouth speaks, God's word is open. We see a verse we've read a thousand times when God reveals, oh my God, I hadn't realized it. It is a very clear message for us and it gets into our heart in such a beautiful, strong and powerful way that we have no doubts anymore. So the right thing is to always listen what the Lord, I will hear what God the Lord will speak for he will speak peace to his people. God will never speak randomly and peace means solution here. Every time you hear and understand the word of the Lord, behind such understanding, there's power for you to do his work, to fulfill it if you understand it. If you believe, if you hold fast to it and confess and don't let it go, the minute you hear God speaking, you will have received a great blessing in your life. The enemy may try to do whatever he wants, but it will be to no avail because you understood the word. Now the word belongs to you. The blessing has been given to you. But if you don't hold it, then there's no way. That's what happened to the biblical heroes. It happened to Abraham when the Lord said to him, get out of your country from your father's house to a land that I am going to show you. Abraham was actually unhappy in his land because all of his people were devoted to witchcraft and idolatry. He was outraged. He wanted to worship the true God. When you find out that these things don't work and you start seeking the true God, there will be change in your life. In a short while, you start to understand God's word and you feel what God wants from you. While you're used to being overtly religious, you just come to the church. Dr. Schwartz is a nice person. Pastor Jaime is a very loving man. Our workers are a blessing. All right, but you have to analyze what's good. What's it doing good for you? Are you different now? Are you overcoming? Do you understand the word of God? Do you know what God wants from you? Because otherwise you're wasting your time when you come here. But if you need it, then start and you understand God keeps speaking. To Abraham, he said, get out of your country from your father's house. Go to a land that I will show you. Abraham did that and God was with him. He was wherever Abraham was. He arrived. He was like a missionary. The first thing he did was to build an altar to God. He called upon the name of the Lord. He took his wife, his nephew. He took his servants. He was a very successful farmer. And there he established the worship of God and people respected it. Whatever that man asked God, God answered. 4,000 years ago, he was in a kingdom where all of their women were barren. That place was cursed. He prayed. One year later, all of them were holding their babies. And Abraham believed that Lord was using him. But why did that happen, brethren? Because he heard, he understood, he realized through the word of God what should be done. You don't have to do what I tell you to do, and I refrain from doing so. That's why I'm a preacher of God's word. You have to do that which you feel. That is a commandment of God for you. And the psalmist said, I will hear what God the Lord will speak, not what the priests of the synagogues would say based on their faith. No, that which God spoke to in his heart. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people. God will never speak of problems. There are problems everywhere, but God will tell you how to get out of the problem, how you can sort out any situation, how you can improve your life. Oftentimes people come here and they're used to doing things a certain way that are not any good. When they start to feel from God, they start paying attention. All of a sudden they summon the strength to stop all wrongdoings with all the sinful actions. For he will speak peace to his people. Those who are willing to hear God are part of God's people. Upon hearing God, you're not only his people, but you become sanctified people. People who become members of the family of Jesus. That, uh, that, 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 uh, that man who was paralyzed and carried by four men, just because he acted by faith, Jesus said, son, your sins are forgiven you. To the woman who had a flow of blood, daughter, your faith has made you well. The moment you act based on the word of God, you receive such a special treatment, the most intimate the Lord possibly has. Since you are children of God, he will take care of you. 
Therefore, he will speak to his people, and it's written here, and to his saints, those who prepared, who were sanctified, who are clothed and ready to go to battle, and the glorious garments God gives to us will never allow any evil to attack us, any evil to make us suffer. And the psalmist wrote something else. But let them not turn back to folly. What does it mean? Back to sin. Back to forsaking God and doing things that God condemns. And as a result, you will not be blessed. A biblical principle is, by whom a person is overcome, him he's brought into bondage. If you fall for temptation, you become enslaved by that temptation. If you serve the word of God, you become enslaved. So to speak, by the word of God, you're protected. God doesn't want slave, but he wants to bless you. However, let them not turn back to folly. If you know that truth, but then one day you decide to turn your back to God, to whom are you surrendering? Who is enslaving you? The enemy. He will do away with you. All the devil wants is that you turn your back to folly. He wants you to depart from the way of the truth, to rebel against it and become the person who is dominated and used by the enemy. And in this way, the enemy will end up destroying you. But if you stick to the word of the God, the Lord will bless you. Don't turn back to folly. From folly he has taken us. From sin he has taken us. What for? So that we may walk in the light. And when you notice that something might make your life difficult, might lead you to fall into sin, take a step back and take off. You'd better sever your right arm, someone who's very useful for you, rather than the whole body and end up burning in hell. As Jesus said, pull out the eye. I mean, not literally, right? It's someone who is your illumination, who helps you, but might make cause problems in your life. Never turn back to folly, to time when we had no rights before the Lord, and as a result, we suffered. Amen, brethren. Oh, glory to God. Pay close attention to this. You must trust God, brethren. Otherwise, there's no way. When some people have finished praying, they think nothing has happened. Why do you allow this negative and false spirit to take hold of you when you have the spirit of God, of courage, of power, of confession? You have the gift to call the things that don't exist as though they did. So remain firm in God's word and he'll certainly bless you by confirming the blessing that he has in store for you in the name of Jesus. Let's watch now the real-life drama for today, shall we? Homilda suffered for two years with pain in her right knee because of an infection. I had three bouts of very strong pain. I even had to take morphine to relieve the pain because no other medicine would lessen the pain I felt. But the pain would return after the action of the medication was over. She said she had so much pain she couldn't even walk. I walked a little, then I started to feel a lot of pain. It hurt a lot when I stood still and when I walked, it was always hurting. Sometimes I felt the pain radiating down to my ankle, you know. It was such an awful pain. Mainly in the evening, it was worse than during the day because I couldn't turn in bed to the right side of my body. Because my leg would hurt, the bone would hurt a lot, you know. Then I went to see the orthopedist. He took an x-ray and he told me then that I had to have some knee injections, a medication they put inside of the joint. Only a doctor can do it because they apply an anesthetic along with the injection. And I was waiting for a time slot in the doctor's schedule for the procedure. But until now, the procedure hasn't been done yet. So I always ask that only Jesus was able to heal me. Homilda was a member of another denomination. On October 24th, 2014, she attended the service held by Dr. Suarez at the Grace of God Church in Curitiba. I like Dr. Suarez and the Faith Show a lot. I always watch him here in my house. So when he came here, to my city. My daughter was supposed to accompany my daughter-in-law, but as she was busy that day, I attended the service, right? I had an encounter with Jesus on that day. It was meant for me to be healed in that place. She said she had felt pain all night long, you know. I was sick. 
when I got there with a lot of pain. When she was there, Dr. Suarez said the prayer of faith for the healing of sick people. Now I want to say the prayer that I normally pray, the prayer that the Lord God answers and heals all kinds of diseases and problems. If you need my prayer for any type of physical healing or emotional, mental, spiritual, stand up for me to pray. At that time, I closed my eyes and said, Lord, heal my leg at this time. With great faith, I asked the Lord to heal my leg at that moment. Then I felt my leg starting to tingle. It started tingling down to the soles of my feet and it was gone. And I only felt that sensation in the soles of my feet. And at that moment, when Dr. Suarez asked us to go up on the platform and to start walking, the tingling was over and the pain that I had felt was gone. I walked up and down the staircase briskly and felt no pain. And I felt at that moment that the Lord had truly healed me. For more than two years, I had pain in this leg, in the joint of the leg. Every day, depending on how much I walked, I could barely sleep at night. Is the pain gone yes, now? Yes, it's gone. It was such a joy for me because that day I could already sleep well and I wasn't feeling pain anymore. She was jumping with joy. The next day we went out for a walk and my father and I had to run to catch up with her. She can walk better than the two of us. And ever since then, I haven't felt any more pain. I do the laundry without pain. I have slept well and I haven't felt pain anymore at night. I can wash the dishes and remain standing for many hours. I can lie down and sit down and not feel anything anymore. She does everything and doesn't complain about pain. Thank God she has been healed in the name of Jesus. Our God is awesome, isn't he, brethren? It's beautiful. What's good is that it's for everyone. There are no protégés or neglected. All those who want it, they can go up to Jesus, drink from the fountain. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. The Word of God says so. You just need to be willing to mend your old ways. If you're tired of the beaten track, if you don't feel accomplished, you have to make a decision, you and God, and let God give you guidance. When God guides you, it's 100% success. When man guides you, it can be 100% failure. It's much better to be successful in the name of Jesus. Let's watch the question segment now. Dr. Suarez, what signs indicate that an individual needs deliverance? Sometimes we think it's only when you tear money apart or act like crazy in the streets but any abnormality, even if it is well hidden, it means they are held in the hands of the spirit that caused them to sin. They remain stuck. So that soul has been kidnapped. It does need deliverance. We must ask God for his guidance, because without him we can do nothing. His direction, and when we start praying, we must be put in it in the hands of God. It may be a case of possession. The devil's inside, it must be cast out. Or it may be just a temptation. But any type of abnormality, it actually means the spirit of error is in action in that life of that individual. And they must be delivered. Let's go to the second question now. In what circumstance are people's opinion valid? Wherever it's right. Don't, don't go that way because there's a snake, so don't go. <laughs> However, when it comes to the Holy Scriptures, if the Word of God says, forget other opinions, when you hear the Word, believe. You can hear the Word first and confirm it later, because the ones you consider to be very spiritual are so outside the Word, they have to prove first, because they may be on the outside pointing their fingers to you. If God really speaks to you, remain firm, and then you say, Lord God, thank you so much. And the truth, you know the truth doesn't harm anyone, right? Speaking the truth is the most beautiful thing you become free. You may feel embarrassed about this truth at first, just for a while, but you'll feel delivered afterwards, you know. It's better to always tell the truth. The opinion that always must prevail is the one that knows inside the word of the Lord God. Let's go to the Open Your Heart segment now. Dr. Suarez, I have attended one of your churches for nine months. However, I am a very resentful person. I hold grudges against people, even if they haven't done anything against me. I believe it has to do with the suffering I go through in my marriage. My husband is always saying he will sell his soul to the devil in the hopes of being rich. Besides, he cheats on me with lots of women. 
He takes pleasure in treating me like a prostitute by imposing how I should dress and how to behave. And if I don't obey him, he beats me. Dr. Suarez, I don't love my husband, but because he was the one who took me from the wayward life that I used to lead, I'm afraid to leave him and suffer with my children since we don't have anywhere to go. Please tell me, what should I do? I wish I had a biblical school and have you as my student because you don't even know the ABCs of faith. You had a very wayward life. He took you out and you're only afraid to leave him, but you're not afraid to leave Jesus, so you don't belong to Jesus still. Your husband likes it when you dress in a provocative way. And besides, he has his affairs. He says he'll give his soul to the devil. Everything is just so wrong. He doesn't need to be saved, but it will all start with you. The moment you encounter Jesus and change your life, he'll say, woman, you're too pretty. Change this provocative dress now. Stop it. Go change your clothes now. He'll change completely. He'll be protective of you. It is all wrong uh, because you haven't been free from that demon that has always oppressed you and used you. He's also using your husband. Unusual behavior, sister, indicates there's a demon in your situation. And all this is normal as the presence of God. You must take a stance, keep firm, and God will grant you victory and a big victory in the name of Jesus. One of these days you'll tell me, Dr. Schwartz, he tells me off when I'm using a plunging neckline. It's not really good, right? Because now you belong to Jesus. You see, it's quite close. Oh, if only I could have a biblical school in order to teach you something new every day. In a short while, and the face show is a biblical school. Remain firm in this school, and in a short while you will be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen? Let's stand up now. I want to pray with you and pray first for those who are at home, no matter in what part of the world they are. And I want you all to join me in prayer. Friends, bow your head and close your eyes now. Oh, God will bless you greatly. God, we are praying to you now. We are in the name of Jesus in your presence to bless all those people who are praying with us at home. They heard your word. And some people have the same problem as this woman who wrote to me, God. I paralyzed all the actions of the devil in their family, in their life. All diseases and infirmities leave now in the name of Jesus.